I was uh, I had the privilege of talking to uh, Pastor Henderson this weekend, and as him and I were sitting down talking, we were uh, discussing legacy. Amen. Legacy. Uh, legacy is something that you leave behind. Uh -huh. Amen. Something of value. Uh -huh. Amen. It's something it's of an inheritance. Uh -huh. And many of the churches are struggling and to find someone to hand the mantle to, so to speak. We're, we're, we're struggling to find people who have a heart of God that wants to come up under the ministry, amen, and to, when one pastor moves off the scene, then there should be another pastor that's able to move right in, amen. And it's the current pastor's responsibility to, to raise those people, those men and women up, Amen. But all of us are having struggles finding what is most essential in a leader, and that is commitment. That's commitment. And one of the things that we discovered is if you ever want to know what a person's level of commitment to God is, look at the other areas of their lives. If they don't have commitment in their lives in other areas, more likely they won't have no commitment to God, even though they say that uh, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen? The Bible says that you shall know them by their fruits. So whatever they display, that's what the heart is, is closest to. Amen? Whatever they display. So, uh, like many of us, we're, we're praying and asking God to raise up a Joshua generation. In when we talk about the Joshua generation, we talk about that generation of 20 and below. We talk about that younger generation, that generation that was obedient to God because uh, in, in, the, in the book of Exodus, the, the older generation, 20 and above, they were disobedient to God. They wouldn't go into the promised land. So God said, I'm going to kill you right out here in the wilderness, and I'm going to take your seed into the promised land. And the seed was the seed of, of, of their children, was their children. And the only elders there was Joshua and Caleb. Because when Moses said, sent the spies into the land, there was only two that came back with a good report. He sent 12 men into the land to spy out the land, but only two came back and said, we can take the land because God's on our side. The other 10 said, hey, we can't do it, we can be small. They, we look like grasshoppers. And they said, we can live. They didn't have any faith. So God said, since y'all are too scared to go in and take what I promise you, I'm going to let you die here in the world, and I'm going to take your children in. And the only two that out of your generation that we're going in is Joshua and Caleb, because they were the only ones who dared to believe in spite of what things look like. See, sometimes we get upset and we get scared and we draw back because of what things look like. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever been there? It looked like they committed. Now, when you talk about a person's level of commitment, you're talking about their allegiance to the land. Their allegiance to the land. When you go to purchase something and you want to purchase it on credit, what your creditors will do is look at your commitment to your previous creditors. And if you have been unfaithful or unwilling to commit to your agreement with them, then more likely you're not going to commit to a new agreement with me. Amen. Now think about it. If man got that much sense, I ain't better now. I ain't I ain't I need y'all business. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get this. Amen. But I'm just trying to tell you, if man got that much sense to check your history, and if you know if you need credit, then you have to do what they call credit repair. You have to start being more faithful. You have to start being more uh, 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 committed to what it is that you get signed up, signed up for, right? So if I'm looking for a Joshua generation, someone who can lead this generation, then I got to find that person. God got to reveal that person to me. You can't just walk up to me and say, well, I, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a evangelist. I want to be a uncle. Ah. You got to show me. You have no God from Missouri. Yeah. Missouri to show me something. You, you got to show me. You can't just say it. You got to show me. 
in, 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 in your acts or your works is evidence that you believe. So since we're all having such a hard time in the same area of raising up prophets and, 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 and evangelists and, and pastors, since we're all having so much difficulty, we've been in prayer and we've been asking God to raise up a Joshua generation. Somebody, somebody who's committed. See, the Bible says, remember the Lord thy God thy creator in the days of your youth. Because when you get old, you can't do what you used to do when you was young. Come on now. When, when, when I was young, I could fast and we got a time. You know, as I get older now, you got more medication, you got to take, you got to take with food. So you can't fast like you used to fast when you was young. You know, when, I, when I was young, I used to be able to dance and, and, and shout before the Lord. But when you get older, you're drunk, won't let you do what you used to do. So whatever you're going to do for God, you got to do it while you're young. So God's not going to raise up a young generation, a generation that fears me, a generation that, that dares to believe me, a generation that will go in and take what I promised him. That's the kind of generation I'm raising up. But the Bible also said that God went out three times a year and he looked for a male that who can lead the people, a male who can lead the people. He said three times a year he went out and he looked for a male, a man, and he could not find one. My Lord, my Lord. He went out and he looked for a man and he could not find one. What a man? I'm talking about a real man. A man that fears God. A man that knows that he can't do anything without God. Amen. A man that's willing to follow God. So we are in need. The church right now is in desperate need of leadership. And you, you, you put it all on us. Amen. You put it all on me. I, I listen. When I need him, I know I'm going. I know that I am a pilgrim in a strange land. I know this world is not my home. Yes. I thank God for the many blessings that He has yes. bestowed upon me. Yes. He has entrusted me yes. with many blessings. I don't own nothing. Mm -hmm. Not even the gold of my breath. Not, not even the breath that I'm about to I don't own nothing. Yes. I am simply a manager. Mm -hmm. God allows me to manage His stuff. Right. Yes. So since I'm only a manager, I'm not going to get so attached to these things. Mm. Come on now. Come on now. When it's time for me to go, I'm going. But God has a mandate that I am to leave a legacy to somebody. Someone has got to be able to pick up the mouth. It would be a shame for the Lord to call me home tomorrow. I know you got nobody stuck in this place. That would be a shame. It would be a shame if we came to this place a year after I'm passed on to be with the Lord and you find a, a, a CDC sitting out front, big old marijuana plant. Sit on front of this building. It'd be a shame for a place that was so sacred at one time become such an unholy place. All because God looked out and couldn't find me. Amen. Amen. Help us, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Help. So I need y'all pray with me. Amen. Amen. I need y'all pray with me. And when you pray, listen, don't focus so much on yourself. Some of y'all go to God and pray. You got a whole list of stuff, Lord. I need you to do this, this, take care of that. Oh, yeah, don't forget this. You got a whole list of things that you want God to do. You know what? If He said, I already know what you let me love before you even ask of Him, He said, well, Why do you worry about that? He said, I'm concerned about what you're going to do, what you're going to what you're going to put on your back. He said, I already know what you're going to do. I have already heard you that I will supply you every need of the mercy, glory by Christ Jesus. So, Praying so much about yourself. Amen. Don't you know that Jesus is the great intercessor? Jesus stood in the gap for the entire world. And he called us to do the same thing. He said that I would that no man would perish, but that all men would come to repentance. People are only going to come to repentance when he's lifted up, when he's magnified. So it's our responsibility as the body of Christ to magnify the Lord. To magnify means to enlarge. Okay? To magnify something means to make it big. We don't make a big deal enough about Christ to be. It shows up in our praise. It shows up in our worship. 
Come on now. You go to Wayne Stadium, you go to you, you go to a football game, and the people make a big deal. They'll take off their shirts, they'll paint a big old green S on their chest, they'll put more paint on their face, they'll run around screaming and act like a banshee. But we can't get the same set. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Unless the praise ain't up in it. We need to find the Father. Make a big deal out of God. Amen. Amen. When we begin to make a big deal out of God, then others will begin to make a big deal out of God. Amen. Amen. But it's up to us. It's up to us. That's what he called us for. He called us out of our sin, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. A light reveals we're supposed to be seen. People are going to be able to see Christ in us. Amen. People ought to be able to look at me and know that I am a Christ follower. They ought to look at you and know that you are a Christian. Amen. 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 They ought to listen to your conversation and know that you are a Christian. They ought to be able to see your conduct and know that you are a Christian. Amen. Yes. But we don't make a big enough deal about it. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. This is not my mess, but there's something I'll be the Lord when you hear. Amen. Amen. Well, I ain't sorry. I'm not, I'm not sorry. I don't want to talk that way. I'm not sorry. God, He knows what we need. Even when I'm trying to do something else, He knows what you need. Amen. Amen. I told you that I had the, this is the finish of our series, Trusting the God that you did not see. That's a challenge. Mm, wow. Amen. Amen. That's a challenge. The trust of God that you cannot see. And we went over uh, for the past four weeks, we went over several different avenues of looking at uh, how to trust the God that you cannot see. We looked at God in the dark room, amen. And then we looked at God uh, with renewed vision. And then we looked at him as fasting in the sun, amen. And, and throughout all, we need to understand that God allows darkness and calamities and all sorts of difficulties that enter into our lives. Y'all don't believe me. He either allows them or he commits them. Okay? He allows difficulties to come into your life. Listen, if you never had difficulties, you wouldn't know what God could do. How y'all got faith? Amen. Yes, amen. You gotta have a level of faith you get. You may not have a whole lot of faith, or you may not have a lot of faith that your neighbor has, but you got faith. Because God said, I have given unto every man a measure of faith. So we got faith. Amen. 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 And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without faith it is impossible to please God. So faith is essential. Alright? If you never go through anything, then your faith never gets an opportunity to be exercised. See, because you can sit there and sit in those pews. <laughs> you can sit in those cushioned pews and you can say, I got faith. The only real time that you ever know if you really got faith is when your faith is challenged. Then, and only then, at the end, can you say, I got faith? Don't be nobody else that say, I got faith. And then when trials come, you buckle up. Because the Bible said, we ought not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to, but we ought to think with a sober mind. You need to know who you really are. You need to know that if you ain't spending no time with God to get no faith, you ain't got no faith. You need to know if you're not committed to the things of God, then when trouble comes, you will fall. Yes. You need to know that you can't do nothing without God. You need to know that when the doctors give you a bad report, and it's the last report that you will ever hear, the only person reverse that thing is God. Yes. Thank Amen. Thank you. And at that point, it's going to take faith. Ain't that, ain't, listen, you ain't got time to start mustering it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You ain't got time to start mustering it up when pain is back in your body. You ain't got time to start mustering up with hospice in the room. You ain't got time to start mustering up then. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Build your faith now. Wow. Yes. Yes. Now. So when trouble do come, and it will come, mm -hmm. it will come. Yeah. But when it does come, I'll be 
be able to be steadfast and immovable. Mm. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Nothing by any means shall cause me to move from my sweat. Right, not sickness, not death, not things further, not things done. Nothing shall separate me from the Lord. I will hold on to my faith. Yeah. Listen, I spent all my time. I spent all my time building up my faith. The Bible says that faith cometh by him. I spent a great deal of my time visiting other preachers. I listen to their podcasts, I listen to their sermons, I go to their churches. Because in order for my faith to be built up, the Bible says, it cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. How can you hear except you have a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Come on now. So you got to be in the vicinity of the word. If you're not in the vicinity of God's word, in the vicinity of somebody's word, and whoever word gets in you, it's going to show up. It's so short. Amen. That's why some of you have so difficult of time to praise God. Because to praise is, is a spiritual vehicle. If, if you ain't got nothing spiritual in you, then the praise ain't got nothing to attach itself to. Come on now. Because God is not going to attach itself. He said no flesh will glorify himself in his presence. So, acting like you're a Christian, talking like you're a Christian, don't make you a Christian. Being amongst the Christians, don't make you a Christian. Saying you're a Christian, don't make you a Christian. Only one thing makes you a Christian, and that is a true conversion. That means you got to change. You got to change. My prayer is one of Lord, doing me what I can do for myself. I can present my body. I can make up in my conscious mind that I'm going to come to God's house and I'm going to live on this altar. And I'm going to stay here until he do something in me. I made it in my mind. I ain't going to nobody stop me. I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep coming. And I'm going to keep coming. And I'm going to keep coming. And I'm going to keep knocking. And I'm going to keep asking. And I'm going to keep seeking. Because he promised me. He said, knock. The door will be open. If you seek, you will find. He promised me. God is looking for people who are consistent and persistent. Yes, yes. You have to be consistent and persistent. I, I, will, I will be like Jacob. Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Mm-hmm. That's what Jacob told me. Jacob said, God, I'm going to wrestle with you even though you're not my hip out of joint. And it's painful. I'm going to hold on to you until you bless me. I'm going to let you go. You got to bless me. I've suffered too long. You got to bless me. I gave up too much. You got to bless me. You promise me you're going to bless me. See, some of you out here not going like, oh, no, that's not. That's it. Give up to me. Give up to me. It's going to pray the worship. Pray the worship going for it. Listen, you may not feel it, but let me just stay here. If we just stay here, he said, Lord, I ain't gonna let you go until you bless me. Just your presence, make your presence known in this place. I ain't gonna let you go until you bless me. He'll show up because of your consistency and your persistence. But we have too many shallow Christians. We have too many surface Christians. We we don't we don't get the meat of the word. Listen, we ought to be past milk. Some of us ought to be past milk. The Bible says that the babe desires the sensual milk of the word. But those of you who have matured, you ought to desire strong meat. Amen. He said, some of y'all who need to be teachers, because you've been in this thing long enough, need to go back and be taught again. This is the word, yeah. He said, some of y'all been around the church for so long that you should be in position. Well, you can pull somebody up under your wing, but yet you need somebody to pull you up under your wing. I don't care how long you've been in the church. You've got some babes who've been in the church for a long time. And we got some babes who just got in the church who are advancing in the things of God because they're consistent and persistent in their pursuit of Him. That, 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 that's, where your, that's where your consistency has to be. It has to be in a pursuit of God. As the deer pant after the water. So does my soul pant after the deer, oh God. David said, Lord, whatever you do, 
I know I messed up. I know I lied. I know I had the right to kill. I know I stole his wife. That she, I know I've been pregnant her. I know I tried to hide the pregnancy. I know I lied. But Lord, whatever you do, punish me for don't take your spirit from me. Punish me. Do whatever you gotta do, but don't take your Holy Spirit from me. See, God, we can't make it without Holy Spirit. She ain't made it. David knew that without the Holy Spirit, he can't do anything. He knew that with the Holy Spirit, he was able to bring down giants. He knew with the Holy Spirit, he was able to conquer four armies. He knew with the Holy Spirit, he was able to send off lions and tigers and bears in the wilderness to keep the sheep of his father. He knew it was the Holy Spirit. And he said, whatever you do, God, punish me. I deserve punishment. He said, my sin warrants punishment. But whatever you do, don't take your Holy Spirit from you. We do easy, give up. We, we, we give up easy. Listen, some of us don't even believe that the Holy Spirit is right in our lives. Stop thinking about your flesh. Stop thinking about your flesh. God wants to do it by now. Amen. This is what I found out. God's best work. It's not you back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if I think about this, <laughs> other night my wife and I, well, she was in the, in the living room and I walked out on the back deck. And I began to look up in the sky. And I, had, I had got this idea from Dr. Tony from the book of his I And I went out and I, I was looking up in the sky and I noticed that the sun and the moon both was in the sky at the same time. But as the sun began to go down, it was still light outside, but there was a real bright star up there in the sky. And I just sat down my back and I, I looked up there in the sky and I looked at that star. And as I was sitting there meditating on God's word, I noticed other stars started to pop out. The darker it got, more and more stars started to pop out. And what the Lord showed me, he said, those stars ain't popping out. Those stars always been there. They've always been there. See, when we're in our darkest places and we don't see God, we need to know that He's always there. And He's always been there. Amen. Even though we can't see Him. And He's there and He's asking us to trust Him. Amen. Trust Him. But if we never want to go into the dark places, then he can't, then we can't build our trust in him. Mm -hmm. See, you, you do gotta know what God can do to what God has done yes. in life in the past. Yeah. They overcame by the words of their testimony in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. The people only overcame because they trusted God. And I can tell you about it. I can tell you about how God worked in my life. I can tell you about what God has done in Jacob's life, what he's done in Joseph's life, what he's done in Moses' life, what he's done in God. But you need to experience. So that you can have some trust in God. Even in the darkest place of life. Because we have some dark things come upon us. The loss of love on us. That's a dark place. Sickness. That's a dark place. We go income is spread. That's a dark place. Amen. This stuff going on over, over in Israel, mm -hmm. this war, and now the United States has made a vow to run the baby. Amen. Ain't no way of that, huh? In France. Okay. This woman here, you know what her prayer is that night. Lord, protect my husband. Lord, watch over him. Because we, listen, we need to understand that life is strange. Life is fragile, and I don't care what you had to pay. By the night, you'll be somebody's house. Amen. Especially if you're in the building. Come on, and there was in the building. One day, you get one duty station before nightfall, you find yourself boarding an airplane flying to a whole other country. Orders was issued out an hour ago. Pack your bags. You're going to Beirut, you're going to Afghanistan. You going to Kuwait? You going to Vietnam? You going to Korea? Just like that, life changes. 
life changes. I'll never forget it. Now, I was sitting at home, 1991, Christmas Eve. Me and my wife and my friends, we sitting around my table and we, we throw them back. We drank the boy in now. We can throw down. We party. We had that time dirty. My brother and them, they already gone. They always wait. We think we ain't going. Christmas Eve, they call the muscle formation. That means that the whole battalion got to show up. We all show up. Our command sergeant major says, men on the front row, take a knee. So we bow down. He said, the commander in chief of the United States has called you to do it. This time tomorrow morning, you'll be on the railhead heading to Turkey. And from Turkey, you'll be shipping out to Kuwait. The country has called you to answer the war. As I looked around, and I've seen men with many more stripes on their collar than mine, but in the face of every last one of them, I can see the face of a child because the chest kissed me. Life changed. Wait a minute. A couple of hours ago, we were all over my house and we were getting drunk. We were partying. We were celebrating Christmas. And the next day, we packed up everything we had, loaded up on trains, shipped it out. You see, life is so fragile, and we take it for granted. Mm. We take it for granted, like it's something that's promised to us. But those dark times is when God began to make a boy into a man. Just like he formulated the, uh, the embryo inside the womb of a woman in the darkness, God created you and I. He does his best work in the dark. He does his best work. He shaped legs and ribs and kidneys. In, in, in every order you can think of, he shaped it all in the darkness of your mama's womb. And then when he came for what he said, he said, You're not only good, but you're very good. <laughs> he said, Everything that I made is not only good, but it is very good. Amen. Amen. He said, I created you fearful and wonderfully. I made you. God does his best work in the dark. We gotta be willing to go in the dark. Listen, I hope this is working with y'all. Listen, I'm running now. Come on, let's go to Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews. This will be our golden text on today. Hebrew chapter 1. Thank you. Somebody say, hold on a second. Hebrews chapter 1. We'll read the verses 1 to 3. Verse 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God does his best work in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. All right? Now this thing called faith, it says, for by it faith, the elders obtain a good report. How many of y'all believe that you get a good report from your faith? Meaning that when you exercise your faith, you come out victorious on the other side, you will get a good report. God will say, have you considered my servant Rose? Have you considered my servant Don? Just like he said, have you considered my servant John? Y'all heard about the faith of God, right? Verse 3 says, through faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Everything that we see, it was made by something that we can't see or someone. Someone that we can't see. Everything. You, you look at this car, you look at this building, you look at your automobile. All these things were created. Everything that was created was created by the power and the knowledge of God. He handed it over to man. The Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of him, that you are crowned with glory and honor, you made him a little more than the angels, that you have given him power and dominion over the works of your hands. He said, what is man? God said, man is made in my likeness and in my image. He said, that's what man is. I may have made him a little more than the angels. 
he's on. But he's made out of me. He's made out of me. But it takes faith. The world says this. The world says seeing is believing. You heard that? Seeing is believing. But I'm so glad that I don't live in this world. I live in a whole nother world called the kingdom of God. And where there's a kingdom, there's a king. And this king has a different operation than the world does. See, the world says seeing is believing, but in the king it says, if you believe, then you shall see. Now faith is the substance of things, so for the evidence of things not seen. In order for me to have the substance that I hope for, I must see it in the spirit before my faith will manifest it in the natural. Amen. Amen. You, listen, if you're not going to move or operate or do what God called you to do until he showed you the way, then you ain't got no faith. All right now. Amen. You ain't got no faith. If you're not going to, listen, if God said that I called you to carry the gospel, I called you to be a minister of the gospel, I called you to be a, a preacher, if God said it, and then you got to wait until God show you before you move, you ain't got no faith. Because I ain't got to see to believe, but I got to believe to see. That's the way faith works. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that without faith, without faith, it is impossible. You know what it means sometimes. It's impossible. It means that it can't be done. It's that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So faith is essential to me being what God has called for me to be, to me doing what God has called for me to do, for me to have what God has promised me I can have. Faith is essential. Everything else is secondary. Faith is no one. It says, by faith, we understand that the world will frame. By faith. When God spoke in Genesis chapter 1, he said, let there be, he spoke something that was not even there. But the Bible says, then the earth began to separate from the waters. It says, then God created the heavens and the earth. He created all the hosts of the angels. And then he began to put the vegetation in the land. And once he had the vegetation laid out, he said, I'm going to start creating beasts of the fields and fowls of the air, fish of the sea. And then on the sixth day, he said, I think I'm going to create man in my own image. All right, God. After my likeness. Don't you know that you have the characteristics of God? Don't you know that you made it after God? Don't you know that you have the mind of God? Jesus he went far enough to remind us that, behold, I give you power of God. Power of all the power of the adversary. And nothing by any means shall harm you. He gave us power. But we live beneath our privileges because we won't exercise our faith. You know what's more powerful than faith alone? It's faith combined. Faith combined. Well, there's two or three touches in the tree, and Jesus said, I will give you this. If we could all come to the unity of the faith and have my mind set on one thing, on one thing, God said, if, you, if you're all on one thing, he said, there's nothing to restrain you. Don't you know that's why God came down and tore down the Tower of Babel? He tore down the Tower of Babel because he said, the people have all come to one mind, and there's no respect to them. So I must go down and tear down the Tower. Because I don't understand the fact. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to give you this secret. I'm, I'm going to tell you this again. I want you to always keep this in mind. The enemy look like he's operating in chaos. But the devil is very strategic and organized. He look like he's operating in chaos. He look like he's operating in confusion. But the devil is organized. Just as God has assigned angels to each one of us, the devil has assigned demons to each one of us. And if it wasn't for the angels, the devil would take us out. 
but you're faced with a challenge. The angels are spiritual beings that's on our side. The devil is also spiritual beings, but he is our foe. And whichever one you heal yourself to, that's the one that becomes strongest in your soul. All right? So we have to guard our minds. You guard your minds by the things. Be careful what you watch. Be careful what you listen to. Because the devil is always looking for a host. He's always looking for someone to attach himself to. And if you make yourself available, then you're going to always be with anybody. Always. I don't want to be delivered. I don't know about you, but there are some things in my life that I'm still working on being delivered from. I've had some victories. Come on now. I've had some victories. But I'm still working on me. I'm still yielding myself to God to help me to do in me what I'm unable to do for myself. Amen. Amen. But I know that it is in these dark places where God is going to do his best work. And when I come forth, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. Understand? Yeah. Let's go a little further. Faith has always received something. <laughs> you got to be able to see what God sees without it being manifested in the natural. And look, Southern Samuel, the prophet Elijah in his servant was asleep in a tent. And while they were asleep in a tent, his servant got up early in the morning and he walked out of the tent. And as he stood and he, uh, and he stretched, he looked around and he realized that the entire camp was surrounded by the Syrian army, the enemy. And the servant ran into the tent. And he said, my father, my father, he talked to the wife. He said, my father, my father, the enemy is upon us. What we going to do now? But the man of faith, he came out and he said, Lord, I pray that you open up this young man's eyes. That he may see that there's more with us than those who come against us. And God blessed the young servant and opened up his eyes. And when the man was able to get past the natural, the Syrian army, he was able to see into the spirit another army on chariots of fire. That was God's army. And it was much bigger than the Syrian army. And God allowed him to be able to see that there was more with them than those who came against them. But he had to unite with the man of God's faith in order to see it. So us, we got to unite with one another's faith if we want to see it in the spirit so that God will manifest it in the natural. But we don't listen. We don't fellowship enough. We don't trust one another enough. We look at each other's back in history and we find out how they were unfaithful back then. If, if I told you my business, she told me your business, now you telling me, oh, no matter what happened, if I tell you my business, you're going to tell somebody else. So I can't trust you. We can't unite faith because you faithless. Come on now. The Bible says first natural and then spiritual. We got to first present ourselves and then God can do something in us. I already see everything that God wants for me. I already see it. And listen, you ain't got to be super spiritual to see it. You just got to be a visionary. You just got to have a vision. Most of us don't even have a vision for our lives. Most of us don't know where we will be at a year from now. We have no plans. Because James says, in the book of James, it says, faith without works is dead. Therefore, if I knew what God was going to do for me, I'll be exercising my faith right now. Amen. Come on now. Amen. If God said to you that you're going to open a business in two years, then you need to be taking business classes right now. Come on now. If you ain't willing to put no foot to your faith, then you don't have no faith. Listen, your faith is actionable. It moves. Faith, it, it, it does something. Faith is the substance. Substance is something that is essential. Something, something is something that is tangible. Okay? Now, you, the only evidence that you have now, remember, remember, that's what the Hebrews love Now, faith, 
Then go back, then go back. Come on. Take it back, Jason. Oh, I got it. I got it now. Come on, one more time. Then we'll keep it. Come on. Now, faith. Somebody said, now, faith. I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about right now. My faith right now. Not what my faith will become. My faith will be from here on out. My faith will be something that's going to be recognized. It's going to be something to recognize. But now, faith. It's the now faith is the substance. Substance is something that's tangible. It's the substance of things hoped for. It is what is the substance of what I hope for. What do you hope for? What is your hope? My hope is for this ministry. Okay? That's my hope. My hope is not only that God will use me in this ministry, but that ministry will go on years later after I'm gone. That's my hope. So what am I doing with the hope that I have? Well, I have some substance to it. What am I substance? My prayer is, Lord, send me up a Joshua generation, somebody who really come alongside me that I can train, that I can raise up, that they can take over when I move off. That's my hope. The substance is that I'm looking to train right now. The substance is, is that I'm still standing here right now. The substance is that I'm looking for someone right now. That's the substance. All right? The evidence is that I'm looking. The evidence is, listen, you know what evidence is? <laughs> evidence is something that is exhibited. When you go to the court of law, they, they, they bring the case. They always come up. They bring up certain items. They say, "This is what exhibit, right? Mm-hmm. This is exhibit. this is something that is presented that proves that there is evidence." God said, "I need to see something presented that proves that you have some evidence that you believe me." Okay, let me make a deep plain. It, it, it's an old uh, old saying that a lot of preachers use, and you might, might be familiar with. But I'm looking for a job. Okay, I have faith. I'm looking for a job. I ain't going, I want a job, but I ain't going circling. I ain't going to call nobody. I ain't filling out no applications. Lord, I just need you to give me a job. Yeah, what those shots are. How are you going to give me a job? Yeah, what are those shots are. Listen, you're going to be jobless. You can sing all the tones you want. You go then I can pour oil all into you like a bucket fried chicken. Listen, whatever you want to do, until you put some faith in your faith, you're going to go without. Yes, yes. Amen. I told you when I said, God is from Missouri. Mm-hmm. He said, Show me that you trust me. Show me that you trust me. We got people in the church today that swear up and down that they only the way to heaven. But when you look at the evidence, the only way to hit. You can't tell me that I'm trusting God. <laughs> I know God, God made me. If God won't be smoked, he would obey. The evidence said that you don't really trust God. Because if you trust the God, you would know what he has said about the temple. Alright? You can't tell me you trust God. And yet you will still shack with your mom. And she will shack with you. Because if you trust God, you will know what God says about people who are uh, living together and not married. You can't tell me you trust God and you study getting drunk. You study talking about folks. You study uh, 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 stealing. You study lying. You can't tell me the evidence. Somebody said one time, if you were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? If you were accused of being a Christian. If you were accused of being a Christian, would we be able to find enough evidence to prove that you are? I'm not saying that you ain't Christian. I'm not saying you're going to hell. If you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then according to the word, his promise is that you say it. So I'm not talking about now faith for you to get to heaven. I'm talking about now faith for heaven to get to you. All right, over here, over here. Listen, listen. With now faith, I can bring those things that are in the spirit realm into the natural realm. And the only way I can give them is through now faith. All right? Through my faith in Jesus Christ alone, Heaven is already my home. When I leave here, I'm going to heaven. But while I'm here, I need now faith. I need now faith. So when sickness hits my body, 
I can use now, thank the Lord, by your stripes. I'm already healed. I utilize the word. The Bible says that the word not being mixed with faith properly enough. You can have the word through, listen, we said through faith we know that the world were framed by the word of God. Ain't that what Scripture said? Through faith we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God spoke it and it came into existence. He gave us the power to speak it and it must come to existence or we came to existence for God because he exercised his faith. And we have that same faith. We just don't exercise it. We say we got it. It's like, we listen, I got weights at home. I got about 150 pounds of weights at home. And they dust me. They don't lie. I'm just going to tell them I'm They dust me. I move around and just pop the bum every once in a while. Those weights do me no good until I pick them up and begin to exercise. All right? You got faith. Come on, saints. I know you got faith. You had enough faith to show up here this morning. You had enough faith to give your life to Jesus Christ. But don't let your faith stop there. Oh, you can do so much more. Oh, you can do so much more with your faith if you only begin to exercise it. You can have the things that God promised you. We live beneath our privilege because we don't exercise what God has given us. The children of Israel died in the world because they wouldn't exercise what God had already promised them. He said, I give you the spot of ground that your feet stand upon. He said, the land that I will give you, it, it, it belongs to you right now. There's an enemy, the Canaanites, the Hittites, and all the other ites. They're all in your land, but the land belongs to you. I just need you to trust me enough to go in and possess the land. God said, healing is yours. He said, let the sick say, I'm healed. Prosperity is yours. He said, let the poor say, I'm rich. Listen, you do not have to accept your condition as it is. Are you hearing me? You do not have to accept the conditions of your life as it is. But unless you exercise your faith on a consistent, persistent basis, you will remain the same throughout this time. Some of y'all ain't moved what you had 10 years from now. 10 years ago, I seen you where you at, and you ain't moved. You ain't moved. You're still in the same bed, poverty stricken state you've always been. Been faithful to church, but have not been faithful to God. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're not conformed to this world. You've been transformed by the people in your mind. You gotta start thinking different. I gotta start thinking different. We got to start thinking different. We, when, when we start thinking different, we start seeing things differently. When we start seeing things differently, we can see what God sees. Amen. Yeah, yeah. hey, as long as I can look at my current situation, I can never hear what God told me I can hear. Peter asked, he said, Lord, bid me to step out the boat so I can walk on the water like you can. Jesus said, come for it. He had enough faith in his life to step out the boat. And when he stepped out the boat, he was standing on the water. And he walked across the water just like Jesus walked across the water. Because he had faith in Christ. But the Bible says, then the boasting winds came past. And he started looking at the winds. He started looking at the circumstances of life. And when he started looking at the circumstances of life, he had took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to sink. That's what happens to us. As long as we keep our eyes on Christ and pay no attention to the winds of this life, because the winds will come. Oh, you can't avoid them. They will come. But you don't let them move you. You don't let them move you. You don't let them take you out of what you got and call you to do. You be steadfast and you be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. If Peter had just kept it, Jesus even told me, he said, Oh, ye of little faith, why did you die? I believe that's what he asked us. Sometimes we be, listen, we be right at the threshold of getting what God has promised us, but because the circumstance of life calls us to take our eye for Him, we turn and we run and we fall even further. And God said, Why did you Ain't you seen me work that out in your life before? Have I ever failed you? Even when things got bad, were not there? Did I bring you out? Did I heal you? Did not deliver you, did not beat you, did not clothe you. He said, when nobody else was there, when nobody else was there, did I show up in the darkness? Why did you die? 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 Why did you die
you got me now? Why you got me now? I can't give you the big stuff because you're not going to be faithful for little stuff. I'll bless you with little things and you don't give me no appreciation for that. What makes you think I'm going to give you a max on the hill and you're not even thankful for the two that one? When you didn't have nothing, I turn around and give you one bit of And you still ain't going to be that. The Bible says, just by this problem, God says, I'm going to give you houses that you did not build, land that you did not for vineyards that you did not build. He said, and when I bless you, God says, be careful that you don't forgive me. Yes. Yes. If you don't forgive me. We be glad when the Lord blesses us. But oh, how it just simply fades away as time goes by. As we start feeling better in our bodies. As our friends start looking a little right and stuff. You know, I, I, I don't think people in this ministry have, have came in and we done pulled up water on them and we done went to the fast and we done prayed that they get jobs and they, they get a job and leave God. There's people that came, prayed for her, and they, they got her, and, and then when they got her, they left God. Or get a hook that ain't saved, or won't be saved, but then they leave God. So they say, unsaved husband, never come to God. And it's all about your faith has to be based on faithfulness. Faith must be based on faithfulness. I'm, I'm not trying to tell you that you. Uh, you gotta be safe with me. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta be safe with me. I wish that you would be there. But it's not uh, 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 essential or uh, detrimental that you be faithful to the ministry. Amen. Because if you're faithful to God, <laughs> you will be faithful to the ministry. Amen. Amen. So, my thing is, I'm trying to get you in an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. If I can get you to have an intimate or a, deep, or a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, then I ain't got to worry about you ministry. I ain't got to worry about you paying your tithe. I ain't got to worry about you showing the price though. I ain't got to worry about you coming to prayer. I ain't got to work. I ain't got to worry about you being on the boat. I ain't got to worry about nothing. One thing that my pastor told me a long time ago, he said, bro, I ain't never got to worry about you for all that. He said, I ain't never got to worry about that. He said, I ain't got to worry about that. He said, you're going to go through some difficult times. But I never got to worry about you going back. Because the Bible says, he who puts his hand to the plot and then looks back and see all the things that he missed, God said, you ain't fit for the kingdom anyway. You're not fit for the kingdom. If you're going to put your hand to the plot, then you're going to look back. He said, you ain't ready. But listen, I got a bond for you. We run out of time. You understand what I'm saying? We are running out of time Amen. to get ready. Whatever you go do for God, you need to do it now, and you need to be faithful while you do it. Because he said, I'm coming back. He said, when I come back, I'm coming back in an hour when no man will know. And when I show up, it's going to be Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that word Sunday. Mm -hmm. He said, it's going to be Sunday. Me when you least suspect it. He's going to show up. And when he show up, he will not hear any of your lame excuses. Mm. Amen? Amen? When you see Christ this next time, he's coming with judgment. Okay? He's coming with judgment. So don't think that you got all the time in the world. Time running out for us all. I don't know how many people that just this week alone going to die. Just this week. And it seemed like uh, Seems like every other day I'm getting a call. Mm -hmm. Every other day I'm getting a call. And it makes me draw a little close to my own mortality. Yeah. It makes me say, Lord, I thank you, Justin, for another day. Yeah. For another day, because you listen, you can yeah. die on your best day. Yeah. Mm. Some of these folks we know that the best way they was getting the exercise and the health, and some of them was vegan. They did everything what we would consider to be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But when time is up, Ah, it's, up. It's, up. it's up. It's up. So we need to get ready. Mm -hmm. Prove your faithfulness to God right now. Yes, yes, yes. And trust that whatever He's doing, mm -hmm. as long as they can make sense, it's working for your good. Yes, yes. It's working for your good. For we know 
That's what the Bible said. The Bible said, for we know that all things, good things, bad things, dark things, light things, all things work together for my good. My good, yes. Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad about that? Yes, now listen, don't let this word hit your hand fall to the ground. You let it reside in your heart. Yeah. So the next time, because God, is, as soon as you leave here, God is going to give you an opportunity to exercise your faith based on the word that I just gave you. He's going to give you the opportunity. Don't fail the test. Don't fail the test. I don't care how difficult the test is. Remember, God does his best work in the dark. Right. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I know it's scary. It's scary for me too. Listen, this word, it comes to me first. Before I do it to you, it comes to me. The Bible says, let the husband and me. Okay, I'm the husband, I'm the farmer. Okay? I, I plowed this ground out here. The husband means fine. He said, let the husband be the first partaker of the fruit. So this is the fruit, the word of God. So I have to take this word before I even give it to you. So just like I know that it's scary for you, it's scary for me too, but I'm going to trust God. He said, God told Joshua, he said, not only be courageous, but be very courageous. You know what I found out? Courage does not eliminate fear. Okay. Courage does not eliminate fear, but it gives you the ability to overcome the fear. Because the Bible said fear torments. Fear paralyzes. But if I got courage, then I can overcome that fear and still be victorious. Fear is just a shadow. Fear has already been defeated. So it just used the shadows to step us. How many of y'all been on planes since Friday? You take that and take the out. You be speaking to Donald Walker? <laughs> and you walk through the door, you speak to Donald and you board the plane. <laughs> plane flying back and forth every day all over the world, crisscrossing everything. But in your mind, it's going to be my plane. <laughs> <laughs> and your mind will be my plane to go out. Hey, Amen. Why well, I got a blue plane? There's no car accidents in there. It's a plane. Amen. Yeah. 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 I don't care what we do. We got to trust God. Right. Well, I'm in my car. Well, I'm in a plane. Well, I'm in a submarine. Whatever I do when it's time for me to go, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. And I'm going to hear God say, Well done, my good. And faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. Now, enter into my rest. I will make you ruler over many things. How many of y'all want to hear that? Oh, hallelujah. I want to hear that. Come on, step your feet in the world around God. Hallelujah. I want to hear that. Amen. Amen. Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. I'm looking, I am looking for God to do great things in my life and in yours. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, to preach deliverance to the captain and recovery of sight to the blind, set in the deal that are rules. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So, you say the Lord has given her this scripture and he has given her the song, These Are the Days of Life. Amen. These are the days of life. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Of all these miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. 
God said that he has given yes, us Lord. or anointed us mm -hmm. to proclaim the good news, good news. under the God. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Saints, God is still telling us that we have a mandate to live by his word. Mm -hmm. yes. Listen, if your life's shaking, if you look, if you doing things that you know you ain't got no business, mm -hmm. stop it now. Stop it now. Live right. Because somebody is watching you. Amen. Amen. Preaching don't necessarily mean that you stand up in a pulpit. Mm -hmm. Your life should be preaching. Amen. Amen. And I got one more thing for on that go. If you're not living right and you say you're a Christian, you told those ones who don't know God and they die for hell, this Bible says that they blood that you probably don't believe. I'm going to leave that with you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior, then it is my plea right now that you will surrender your life to Christ. If you was to die right now and you stand before God, what would you be able to say to God in order for him to let you in his kingdom? There's only one right thing that you can say, that my sins has been forgiven me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. Because no man can come into the Father's presence without first coming through the Son. Right. Right. That's the only way. If you have not did that, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ and his shed blood on the cross as your atonement for your sins, your past, your present, and even your future sins, then when you die, and you will die, you will go to hell. But it is my responsibility to lift up the name of Jesus right now and to encourage and invite you into the kingdom of God. If you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, all you have to do is say the simple prayer, but you must mean it for yourself. And it must be in your heart. So, Lord, I am a sinner, and I want to be saved. I believe that you died upon the cross for all of my sins. And I believe that you died upon the third day, and you made a way for me. I believe that you are the son of the living God. And I believe that he rose you up. Now, Lord, help me to be what you have called for me to be from this day forward. To live a life, a faithful life, that is pleasing unto you. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. My brothers and sisters, you said that prayer, you need to know that you're saved. And there's nothing anyone can do to make you unsaved. It is the promises of God, and they are irrevocable. God bless you. Hope to see you again right here at Emma State Church next Sunday at 11 a.m. Bye-bye for now. Amen. 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 Amen.